Dune. I watched this on HBO Max. I was planning on going to the theaters. And then some of my family was sick, so I couldn't go. And then the next week... Something else came up. Oh, yeah, at work. And then the week after that, the week I was going to go see it, it was no longer in theaters. Something else had taken its place at the theater, my local theater. So I watched it on HBO Max. And... Before I watched this movie, I saw some I saw places like Midnight's Edge and that complain about the score, which I think it fit fine with the movie, with what they were doing. I mean, if they're complaining about the sound mixing, then yeah, that was screwed up in this movie, at least on the HBO Max version, where it would uh, music would be blasting, and you couldn't hear people talk. So you turn the volume up, and after a couple sec or the people be whispering, so you turn the volume up. And then the music starts blasting, and they start yelling and screaming and explosions. It's like, okay, now I turn the volume back down. It's not a good sound mixing movie. So the sound mixing was off. That could be an HBO Max problem. Because I didn't, because as I said, I didn't see it in the theaters when I watch it again on Blu-ray or 4K. I'll be able to prove, I'll be able to decide if it was a sound mixing problem or a problem of HBO Max. The movie starts off a little slow, in my opinion, but after. The first act, it picks up and it gets better. Anybody who gives this movie a one star or a F or D, and they give like the Marvel films all A's, they're just little fanboys that got butt hurt because they're precious little Marvel films. The director said he didn't like them. It's like people cannot like the movies you like. This movie, even at somebody, if, unless you don't like sci-fi and dramas, then you would that'd be the only reason you'd give this movie an F. You have to, like, really, really, really hate science fiction and dramas. It's a shame that the actors that I liked in this movie will not be returning for the sequels, for obvious reasons. I thought the costuming was fine. Everything else was fine with it. I already talked about the, tra the soundtrack. It was a tad too long. They could have cut out some of the stuff in the beginning. But, you know, after you watch the whole movie, like once you get sucked into the movie, you start thinking, oh, that stuff in the beginning that was a little boring needed to be said uh, make the, for, to understand the story. Shame it's one of those part one, part two situations. It sh they could... I guess there's just too much and they couldn't put it in one movie. Or they couldn't do something like Justice League where it's a four-hour film. I would have been fine with it. But I, at least they're making a part two. It's like, for a little while there, it was like, they're not making a part two. This movie's just going to end like that. It's like, okay, what's the rest of the story? I, mean, I guess you could read the book. Because I know that original movie, people hated it. Even the director hated that movie because how, how Hollywood, how the studio butchered it. I don't think there was any bad acting in it. I mean, I didn't like the uh, professor guy from Thor. I can't think of his damn name, but that's where he's from. That's where I know him from. He was like a main, he was, they were trying to make him like a main minor character in the Avengers films until after the first Avenger movie. And then they dumped him. It is funny. There were a lot of the uh, comic book film cast in this movie. Or like, you know, pop culture cast. Because you got uh, Spider-Boy, Mary Jane. You have Poe Dameron from Star Wars. You have Drax from Guardians. You have Thanos from the Avengers films. He had Aquaman in it, and I guess he's my favorite character. Jason Momoa, that's his name. Those are, the only, those, are the, those are the only actors I recognize. Oh, and obviously the guy from I said he was all. And there was also a polka dot man, but I know him from MacGyver as the bad guy, as his like main antagonist.
He was also in Dark Knight Rises as somebody that, not Dark Knight Rises, Dark Knight as the person that Two-Face tortures, the fake cop guy. The visuals were fine, you know, nothing like PS2 quality level that I've seen in some blockbuster films lately. Besides the sound mixing, there's really nothing to complain about or anything. It's a okay film. I gave it a B. The Steelbook looks like crap, or at least the one I've seen on BestBuy.com, so I would, I would definitely be waiting until, like, Black Friday next year to buy this film for $9, because it's not something I need to have right away, considering I recorded it. Uh, that's about it. Thanks to the two people who watched this, if that, and have a good one.